what's up guys welcome back to my channel my name is casey and if you're new here welcome so today i'll be showing you guys how to curl and style a unit you know if you have a small business and you want to learn how to style your units for instagram and things like that i am here to show you today so let's get into it this is a 22 inch 13 by 4 transparent lace unit i used high color dye in the color magenta to achieve this color um, with 40 volume developer so to start, I like to part out the style, um, the parting I'd like to do. I'm going to be doing a mid part today and I'm just molding it down. So I know how I want the curls to fall and things like that. So that's what you'll see me doing. So today I'm using my T3 curler. I believe it's in the size one and a half inches. I will double check and leave it in the description. And my holding spray is Tresemme and it is level four, I believe, of strength. So I'm taking my wax stick and I am molding down the flyaways, anything like that, to get a nice flat base at the top because your unit should be very flat and neat at the top. So you'll see me go in with the hot comb. I'm parting out this area. It's, I call it the T-zone area where you want there to be like almost like a T, especially when you're doing a middle part where there's a part in the middle and then a part along the back that makes it kind of look like a T and then you flatten that down. I wish I had a better angle, I apologize guys. I didn't realize that um, I didn't get a good angle on showing you guys what I mean in this part. But I'm just meaning basically just taking some hair from the front to cover the tracks at the back. That's basically what I'm doing. So for this portion while you're molding, you don't put any wax at the hairline because if you are doing baby hair or anything like that, it'll be, be a little bit hard um, to part out your baby hairs after the fact. So you could just take your hot comb to mold it. Um, you only put the wax at the tops. Do not use the wax in these areas as of yet, not yet at least. You have to wait till you actually part out your baby hairs, which comes later on in the video. So in order to get like really nice full layers into your unit, you need to cut layers. Layers are very important for curls because it basically makes the curls look more full, more voluptuous, and gives it more volume. So it's necessary. Don't be afraid to cut layers or expect with, experiment with cutting layers into your units. It's very important. So right now I'm, I'm parting out the front to start cutting the layers in. Um, I want to show you, I want to like see how I want them to fall. So I'm cutting in like a diagonal. It's really hard to explain. It's better if you guys just watch. <laughs> I also go in and I cut some length off. I just trim it um, because I don't like when the ends are stringy and thin. So I like when it's all nice and full at the bottom. It makes your curls look nicer and it just gives a more, you know, a, a fuller, more voluminous like look to it. So I never leave them on. I always cut the stringy parts off. So it's all one, one length and one, just even and thick at the ends.
We're getting ready to curl. So for the curling process, you'll need some pins, okay? You'll need some clips to hold the hair back in place. And this is Beyond the Zone heat protectant spray. And it also leaves a nice, beautiful shine and it smells amazing. So it's my favorite go-to heat protector for when I'm doing any sort of style with heat. I begin by parting the back section into two sections. This is how I like to curl. I find it being the easiest way. So the back goes into two and then I part out the front. So all together there'll be four parts. So the back is in two and the, the front by itself and the other side this exact same way. So now I'm parting out the first section for my curl and clipping the rest up. So that's where the clips come in. <clears throat> and so I am going to actually be spraying every section with the spray, even though I already sprayed the whole head, because of course it didn't get everywhere. And I wanna make sure that every section gets a little bit of spray and a little bit of sheen. Not too much, just slightly. Now, when you take your curler, you are going to always try to curl away from your face, always. So the curler on each side is always gonna go away from your face. Not You don't curl towards your face. Bring the curler back, like away from your face. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys, like learning to use a curler overall is a little bit tedious. If you're not used to it, it can take a little bit of time to get used to how the motions work. And I'm going to try my best to show you guys how to use it. Um, the T3 curler, the reason why I love it so much is because it's so light and smooth. Like it just flows through the hair and it's light to, it's light to, to hold and it's just like, it's just like butter. Like, it's amazing, so I use it. It's on the more on the expensive side, but I think it's worth it. I mean, you don't have to start with a curler that expensive. You can start with something that is cheaper, um, but it has to have high heat. At least go up to like 220 Celsius, 400 Fahrenheit, or somewhere around that margin. Okay, so for curlers, the bigger the curler, the bigger the barrel, the bigger the curls will be, okay? They're gonna be looser as well. If you use a smaller barrel, the smaller the barrel, the more tight the curl is gonna be. And it's gonna be like a different style of curl. So that's what you would go by. And you could part out more hair, uh, more thicker sections when you use a bigger barrel than when you use a smaller barrel. You have to part out the sections a bit smaller So once you let go of the curl, you let it drop for once, like a second, just to cool down a little bit. Then you use the pin and pin it up. When you pin your curls, the curls will hold better. Um, once they're cooled down, you have a longer lasting curl in your hair. So that's why you, you use the pins. Um, the pins hold the curls so that it doesn't drop right away. And because when there's too much heat in the curl, when it, when it hangs, it's just gonna drop. It's gonna drop before it's ready. And that's okay too if you are looking for more of a wave as opposed to a curl but we're looking for a curl so i am pinning them up so we can hold on to that nice full curl even when i brush it out i'm trying my best to show you guys the motion of like how to use the curler so while i'm turning the curler i'm actually pressing on that little knob a little bit to loosen it so that it, it can help me drag down and twist twist the hair around because if it if you don't loosen it with your finger like it won't allow you to pull the hair down to catch more hair in the curls i hope that makes sense you guys
So before I curl the front, I am sectioning out the baby hair um, so that I can finish like molding the front properly before I curl it. So that's what you see me doing here. I just kind of eyeball where I want the baby hairs to lay on the unit um, as if it was just a real person's head. And then I'm going to go in with my wax stick and mold the rest of the hair back before I curl it. So this is one side completed and I'm just going to show you how it looks all curled up on one side and I'm basically just going to do the same exact thing going the other opposite direction on the other side. Um, I'm going to show you a couple on this side. When you're curling the hair again as I mentioned before it goes in the opposite direction so you're basically curling away from your face. You're bringing the iron in away from your face.
So I'm just parting out the other side of the baby hair. Sometimes I'm able to use my fingers to try to get the baby hairs even on both sides. I mean, you literally just kind of just have to eyeball it. Try to part it out, step back, and look if it looks like it's in an even placement on both sides, like the exact same place in, on both sides when you're doing um, just two baby hairs. They have to be pretty even. So I'm only making two. So if you're making like three, uh, like four, two on each side, um, and then the sideburns, then you'd have to part that out right now as well. But I'm only doing two at the top and then the sideburns. And then I'm gonna use the hot comb and my holding spray and just slick this side back in place um, just so that I can go ahead and finish curling it. And this is what the curls look like once I'm done curling the entire unit. And I'm using the holding spray just to give it a light spray around um, the, all the curls. Just to hold them. Just, you know, gives it an extra little hold. And it's not going to make them crunchy because it's not like extreme hold. It's just like a nice subtle hold. So it's not going to make them crunchy or shiny or anything like that. So don't worry about anything like that. So for cutting the baby hairs... I just wanted to mention that you're going to cut in like a high-low fashion, um, like a, on a diagonal. So at the top nearest to like the eyebrow, you're going to cut short, shorter and then go longer. So kind of like a fashion where like you're using your fingers with the scissors to sh cut shorter and then go longer. So the end of the baby hair should be longer. The part that you brush into the hair should be longer than the actual part, the top I'm curling right now. So I'm using my small mini curler to do this portion of the unit because i don't have one of the pencil flat iron curlers and honestly this is like my smallest curler and it does the same thing so i find that i don't need to order one so i just use this one instead um so i'm using actually some gel so this part i feel like is very important if you have gel or gots to be the clear the gots be tube that comes in the black tube it helps hold the hair down once it's curled and then you're going to use your finger your finger is going to be like where to hold um, the to hold the style, like the hold to mold it. You're going to use your finger to help you mold it, like in that in that curvy motion, and it really really helps. So use your finger. And what I mean to say that you guys need a very 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 light hand when you're when you are molding this. You do not need to press down on the baby hair. It's so much easier when you take the foam. And you kind of just move it you don't have to like try to comb it out or nothing like that you're just kind of moving it If you realize that the um, the hair is getting a little bit harder or difficult to mold, just add a little bit more foam to it, and it'll it'll help um, help it just 
I, what, what would I call it? Help it adhere <laughs> to styling again. So once you um, add a little bit more mousse, and then you can continue styling. So I didn't, I didn't uh, mousse down the baby hairs. They won't show, so I just didn't feel like doing them. Um, and this is what it looks like when it's all done. Now I'm just gonna take a wrap to wrap it down so that it can dry. You don't need to pull it too tight, but just tight enough so that it stays on. And then you just dry it. Um, I'm using this dryer, this blow dryer, because instead of like just putting it under the dryer, just to show you guys that you can just use a blow dryer as well. And here I took my mannequin head and I'm just going to take, take the um, band off and then take the pins out and brush the curls out. So when you're brushing the curls out, you want to brush backwards, brush the hair, cut, um, comb the hair away from the face when you're brushing out the baby hairs. You're going to see in a moment. Child, not the baby hairs. I mean when you're brushing out the hair, not the baby hairs. You don't need to brush the baby hairs. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk today, apparently. If anyone is looking to start a business or have a business selling wigs, I always suggest that you style your wigs and put them on a mannequin head with the mannequin that has a makeup done on their face because like a modern makeup, meaning that the makeup that comes with the mannequin initially is not very modernized and not very appealing. You wanna style the unit and have a makeup artist. If you don't know how to do makeup, I did my mannequin's makeup myself. You can find one on Instagram and ship your mannequin head directly to them. Oh yes, also, it is okay to take your hot comb to just flatten out or even out the um, top because the curls don't need to go that high up. So this is me just correcting that, flattening out the top because you still want the surface to be as flat and neat as possible. So that's what you see me doing right now. I feel like it looks like I'm very being very aggressive while combing this unit out, but I promise you I'm not. Because if you are too heavy-handed with combing it out, you're going to lose the direction of how you want your curls to lay. And then you're going to have to recurl some of it, and that's gets, that gets annoying. So try your best not to do that. Just brush through it softly. Take your time so that you don't lose the style pattern that you're looking for, the, how you want the hair to fall. So the baby hairs, um, they did not mold the exact way I actually molded them. That's because I didn't let it dry long enough. And that's okay. When the unit sells, I will restyle it before I ship it off. So that's no problem. When I ship units, I pin the curls back up before I put them in the box and restyle the baby hairs. Um, so it's easy for installation. Here's the final look, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, if you found it helpful or you learned anything, please give it a like, thumbs up. Like, subscribe, you know the vibe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Bye.